The crying game's about the troubles, but no one remembers that. Hello there, you're watching the Graveyard Swap, where I dissect television for your morbid entertainment. The main item today, of course, concerns the departure of a certain former editor of the Mirror from a certain breakfast show. Piers Pugh Morgan, aka Piers Morgan, aka my favourite George on Britain's Got Talent when I was a tiny child for whatever reason, has departed from the ITV breakfast show Good Morning Britain. After comments he made on the show about Meghan Markle's statements about mental health she made in her and Prince Harry's interview with Oprah Winfrey. And I say it's about fucking time. Old Piers has gotten away with all sorts of offensive remarks in the past, but he wasn't ditched before. But alas, the complaints this time grew too much to handle, especially with the ITV's Get Britain Talking initiative to encourage people to speak up about any mental health problems they have. And old Piers outright said he didn't believe someone who was speaking out about their fucking mental health problems. To cut a long story short, these rather embarrassing remarks are a major PR cock-up, and ITV had to do something about it to save their bacon, as Ofcom received 41,000 complaints, a number only exceeded by celebrity fucking big brother 2007! Now, without further ado, let's move on to our next feature, where I take a cursory glance at the headlines for March the 12th, when I film this bit. So first, in the sun, we have something about the Sarah Everett case. Sarah's suspect went to sex offence. Did cops fail to act? As well as Wil Prince William saying, We're not a racist family. And if we zoom in on the little bit in the corner, uh, byline says Mike Sullivan. Armed cop Wayne Cousins has been linked to a suspected sex crime complaint four days before the alleged kidnap and murder of Sarah Everard. Questions are being asked over how officers acted after the accusation of indecent exposure at a South London takeaway. Sarah suspect Cousins, 48, was taken to hospital with a head injury today after he was found unconscious in his cell. Yeah, obviously they're all talking about this lady because, uh, well, it looks like the person who killed her was a police officer, which, you know, really says a lot about the society we live in, doesn't it? <laughs> and now we go over to the Independent. It's police face inquiry on Everard suspect. Watchdog will examine whether Met officers properly investigated indecent exposure claim involving PC Wayne Cousins. Allegation was made just days before Sarah Everard disappeared. Sarah brought so much joy to our lives. Families moving tribute. Open letter to I, signed by more than 200 women, including MPs and activists, calls on the government and police to act against violence. <coughs> Once again, that quote from William saying, We are not a racist family. Prince William speaks out and reveals he hasn't connected, contacted, sorry, fucking hell, Harry. Queen of Country's Golden Jubilee. Fucking hate country music. Wish it would just burn, die, be eradicated somehow, just, we don't need it, Loretta Lynn's 50th album, I don't know who Loretta Lynn is, and I don't think I particularly care to know who Loretta Lynn is, oh, John Sim on his new cop show, brilliant in Doctor Who and Life on Mars, I like a bit of John Sim, the Gruffalo artist on cute characters and drawing flaws, so an interview with Axel Scheffler, basically. <clears throat> Not to mention... Alarming dip in vaccine take-up rates in poorer areas. Small businesses hit hardest by tax budget hike. World's most expensive digital... Oh, non-fungible tokens. Ugh. I can't... People are right, idiots. Paying money for some digital thing that you can easily reprint online. It's like the fine art business, but even more stupid. And I thought the fine art business was stupid in itself. I wish I could have done more for my friend Caroline Flack. Oh, yeah. By Anna Blue. Don't know who that is. I know who Caroline Flack is, though. She's the Love Island presenter that topped herself after 
a bad breakup when the fucking press kept hounding her and it looks like uh, something else to do with the press. Does it count as the press hounding you if it's the press talk about how the press hounding you is bad? Like, just, it's just a thought. And the late Milton equaliser stuns United. Ugh, football stuff. I don't give a shit about football. And the mirror, the star, the uh, my local paper, the Sentinel, and uh, the Express, and that's it. Have all got appear to have gone collectively insane and decided that a Sainsbury's steak advert would make a decent headline. The Times is its usual accessible, readable self. Uh. Policeman sex crime missed by Met officers. Sarah Everett again. Royal family very much not racist, insists Duke. Because they can't just say Prince William, can they? <coughs> Blindfolded and sleep deprived, Nazanin reveals torture in Iran. Oh yeah, Nazanin Zagan Radcliffe. Uh, Radcliffe, you know, the uh, that lady that got locked up in Iran. <laughs> Basically, by Iran, uh, they said she was a spy, but really, most people, uh, we all know that it's to get that mo back that British money that we owe them because we, yeah. Oh, oh, my favourite, the Daily Mail. William blasts back at Race Slayer. Duke says royal family is not racist, and Queen and Charles support him. As he and Kate show what duty really means. Uh, Q gratuitous photo of Kate Middleton in some trendy pink trench coat. Sarah, suspect reported for indecent exposure just days before she ban it vanished. Now I thought when I first looked at this, it meant it was an article authored by Sarah Vine, Michael Gove's wife, who you know manages to make Michael Gove look like a decent, nice, kind person, which is probably why Michael Gove married her. Uh, but no, I just realised that, you know, the person's called Sarah Everard, and I can't believe I was goldfishy enough to forget that. Oh, and to carry on, zooming into the little article byline, uh, it says Rebecca English, royal editor, because yes, the Daily Mail are so up their own arses that they have a dedicated editor for the royals. The Queen and Prince Charles backed Prince William last night after he insisted the royals were very much not a racist family. William yesterday became the first senior Windsor to address directly the string of allegations made by Harry and Meghan in their explosive Oprah, Oprah Winfrey interview. He also confirmed the depth of the rift between him and his brother. William admitted he had not even spoken to Harry about the TV show four days after it aired. His reaction lay bare, his clear hurt over the claims made by his brother and sister-in-law. The prince's comments were praised by insiders, who said the 38-year-old did very well given the emotion and enormity of it all. Buckingham Palace and Clarence House, the official homes of the Queen and the Prince of Wales, were both said to be supportive of William's solo intervention. The Prince was speaking as he and his wife Kate visited a school in East London to support a youth mental health support service. Aids had turned to page two. And now we turn over to the Guardian. Met police face inquiry over handling of Everard suspect more Sarah Everard things and some pictures of women that had unfortunately been murdered by people of the male persuasion because misogyny is around in our society and it's fucking ugly whatsapp chats raise pressure on Hancock over public and pub publishing's AHS deal Diane Keaton's films ranked uh, and Eddie Izzard, I've been promoted to she. It's an honour. Well, that's good. It's a bit of a break from the Guardian's usual viral and transphobia, isn't it? And if we zoom in on the headline, uh, well, not the headline, the little small bit at the bottom, uh, basically, uh, Matt Hancock, you know, 
was uh, gave an NHS contract deal to his next door neighbour. Uh, Hancock's like, oh, I barely know the guy, but they've just found out there's a WhatsApp chat about uh, chat with the two of them going on about uh, having a nice friendly chat about the plan, like they knew each other rather well. Oh, and now we've got the sport, and uh, thankfully somebody, you know, had the common sense and decency to turn it over at the bus station. Uh, so this here is the sports pages. This is how I found it. I'll be fab with Brazil superstar. Shoot inside. Shoot, shoot. Photo shoot. Goal shoot. Gun shoot. I mean, the sport is the paper that, you know, once said there was a spitfire on the moon. So I wouldn't be surprised if they had some article talk about for some random football player get assassinated. Oh, black magic. Hendo Blow is United Track Keeper. I don't know these people. I'm not a football man. And strangely, this is on the sports page for whatever reason. TV Babe follows Pal Piers. Now Sue quits GMB. World exclusive. Page 7. Yeah, world exclusive because it's fucking fake, mate. Sue. <laughs> uh, this is a few days after I've read the paper by the time I've recorded this bit. And Sue. Susanna Reid is, you know. Still with Good Morning Britain. She's confirmed to be staying on. <laughs> so it's the sport just making shit up as usual. Uh, you know, I've actually heard that uh, it's a, the suggestion that the sport is actually a satirical paper taking the piss out of tabloids. But I wouldn't be surprised if that was true or if that was false. Pose law and all that, isn't it? And I had the nerves of steel to uh, turn over the paper to see what was at the front and tit tit of course tit Kara shows the line side Nadine's a booby millionaire Gogglebox Mary's topless pick shock Wah. and TV babe follows Paul Pierce now Sue quits GMB like the, the, apparently the headline's so good they had to put it twice uh. <laughs> oh and also there's the racing post which is talking about horse racing which apparently people still totally uh, <coughs> still totally watch and follow people boring like that I guess I filmed the last bit without a script, could you tell? Well, anyways, <coughs> that's all we've got time for today, or as in, basically I've done the episode. Uh, and, well, I hope some of you out there enjoyed it, even though the graveyard slot takes shoestring budget to a whole new level. So, until next time, I guess I'll see you, and maybe I'll get the video out quicker this time. <laughs>